Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about how to optimize your character's materials in Unreal Engine 4. So if you recall in the last tutorial we imported in our boy Zane here. Let's just go ahead and load up the skeletal mesh. I'm just going to move his head up a little bit so we can see it in the light there. And uh, Tilt it to the side here. You may notice that, uh, hey, something's kind of missing from his uh, um, from his hair there. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, pan up there. You can see, oh, he's maybe balding a little bit, but we're going to go ahead and fix that uh, hair issue in just a moment. Well, before we get that, uh, get to that, we're going to go into the body and, and the face as well, okay? Because uh, we need to import in a couple other maps. If we go uh, right now and select the uh, skin for the body material right here, you'll notice that in our uh, material graph right here, we just have a simple base color uh, diffuse map there, albedo diffuse, and a specular and normal map, okay? So we need to actually import this in for a PBR uh, material workflow. And so we have a couple other materials that we need to import in. So let's go back into iClone real quick here, and this is a... Uh, the uh, character we started off with, Zane, right here with the glow map. And let's go ahead and go to his materials. And all I'm going to do here is just save all these materials to a texture folder. Okay. So it's basically just going to go ahead and, uh, in my desktop here, I'm going to create a folder. Let's go ahead and create a new folder called Zane. There we go. Okay. Let's make sure we have that folder selected. And it's going to save all of our characters' texture maps into that folder structure now. So we can close down iClone. We don't need, no, don't need it anymore here. Okay, and what I'm going to do is go to my desktop and take a look at the Zane folder here. You'll also notice that we have the Zane FBX that we imported in. And when you import in the FBX, it also generates this .fbm folder. Okay, and this contains a number of the different maps you can use as well. But for this tutorial, we're going to use the uh, folder structure that we saved out. Okay, I just want you to know that the uh, Zane.fbm folder is also there. Okay, so in this folder structure, you'll find like Zane root, and then under here, you'll find uh, the Zane node and the uh, body, and here you find the uh, head and the body materials right here. Okay, so all I'm going to do really is I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag this entire folder into my Unreal project. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, do that here. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag it into the materials folder that I created. Okay, it's just take a minute for this all to import. All right, so you'll see here once it all imports, we have our folder structure here on the left, and we can go into all the uh, separate folders for the different, the different materials and stuff. Let's just go ahead and uh, twirl all those up for now since... Uh, I don't want it to look too messy at this time. Okay, so under Zane node is where you'll find all the uh, uh, skin body and skin head materials. Okay, okay. so all I want to do here is go back into the uh, materials uh, graph here, all right, for the uh, skin body. And I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag the AO, the glow map, the metallic, the roughness maps into my uh, material graph right here for the skin body. Okay, so I'm just going to click and drag those in. And let's go ahead and just make it uh, maximize the size here. And let's uh, get things organized here. So what I'm going to do first is we have an ambient occlusion map somewhere here. I believe it's this one right here. Let's just pipe this into the ambient occlusion uh, node right there. Okay. And then we no longer want the specular map. Okay. So this is the specular map that it came with. Let's just go ahead and delete this one. And we're going to replace that with the roughness map. Okay. So this is the roughness map right there. And then we will have a metallic one, which is this one right here. Okay and plug that in. You can see the uh, texture name over here in case you're interested. And then for the glow map, the glow map will be under emissive color. So let's just put that over here, okay? Apologies if it looks a little bit messy, but uh, there we go. All right, we can organize it if we want and uh, make sure everything is nice and organized. And uh, you know, you can probably do that on your own time, but uh, just so you can see where all the maps are connecting to in a neat and orderly fashion. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and apply this, and let's take a look once we apply it to our uh, Zane skeleton over here. So what it's going to do is it's going to compile the shaders for that uh, for that body part again here, or for the uh, skin on the body. And let's just go ahead and uh, click off here, and you'll see that wowie, this guy has a pretty shiny looking body. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to uh, adjust the roughness map a little bit. So let's go back into our skin body here, and uh, with our roughness, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click and create a constant. Okay. And uh, we're going to also right click and create a multiple, multiply rather. Okay. And we're going to pipe the constant into the uh, B node of the multiply and pipe this one into here and then onwards to the roughness right here. Okay. So all this does is it allows us to kind of uh, pump up the uh, value of our roughness map. Okay. So if I put a value in the constant right here, uh, let's maybe do something like uh, 3.5, for example, and just press enter. And let's go ahead and apply that, and then we'll go ahead and take a look at the recompiled body texture. And there you go. Maybe still a little bit shiny, but uh, definitely a lot more uh, realistic than before. 
All right, let's do the same thing for the uh, face uh, te face material here as well. So we're going to go ahead and uh, double click on skin head over here. There we go. And basically the same process for skin head. Let's go ahead and just uh, make our window a little bit smaller here and go into skin head. And again, we're taking the AO, the glow map, the metallic, and roughness maps, and we're bringing those all into here. And let's maximize it one more time. And get to uh, organizing that a little bit. All right, so let's just uh, replace our roughness map here in the specular. Type in the uh, roughness. Metallic will go above that, so we'll leave some space for the uh, black metallic map here. Just like that. All right, and we'll just uh, bring this one down a little bit. And then under that, after that will be the normal map. Okay, and then the uh, emissive color. I uh, will probably have to make some space for this. Anyways, uh, there is our ambient occlusion map, so we'll kind of put that closer to the bottom there. And the glow map goes under emissive. All right, so again, just the same thing. I'm a little bit uh, disorganized there, but uh, bear with me. All right, so just the same thing basically. And uh, if we want to adjust the roughness, okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that, uh, the roughness map right here. And we need to uh, right click, add that constant again, and add a multiply. Okay, and do the exact same thing. So just uh, type the roughness into node A and into the roughness node right there. And the constant will just probably do the same value. Let's do a value of maybe uh, 3 for the uh, face there. And apply that. And go back to our zine skeleton and wait for his face to compile. All right, there you go. So we get uh, you know some nice specular highlights on the face and... Uh, Everything is looking fine and dandy. We got the glow map and everything uh, working there as well. All right, now let's focus on uh, fixing this poor dude's hair, all right? So I'm going to go ahead into the hair down here. And we have the faux hawk hair. Just double click on that. Now this one we have to do a couple of different things. Let's just uh, move our materials over here. So with your hair, you'll come up with these maps. You'll have an opacity map, uh, the uh, normal map. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the full hawk hair, and the first thing we want to do is change our blend mode from translucent to masked, okay? And we also want to change it to two-sided, all right? This will allow us to have a much thicker uh, hair that doesn't have all those bald spots in it. And then what we need to do is we need to pipe in our opacity into the opacity mask right there. We can go and find the, uh, the hair material here under hair node, okay? There's the full hawk hair material, and let's just take that metallic and roughness map and click and drag those in as well and uh, maximize that window and uh, which one's which let's find out really quickly here this one is the roughness okay so I'm going to pipe that roughness into there all right and the metallic can go into there and again if you want you can uh, adjust the uh, the roughness value as well um, with this uh, using the same constant and multiply and everything like that but let's go ahead and just apply this and take a look at what the result on our zine skeleton all right, so there you go. The hair looks a lot better and a lot more, uh, a lot thicker and more luxurious, okay? Now, another thing you can do is you can go into the full hawk hair and, uh, with the, uh, material selected. In some versions of Unreal, you may have the option to adjust the, uh, the quality of this, okay? So just basically the, uh, let's zoom in a little bit there. Uh, you can adjust the edges, the, uh, opacity mask clipping, uh, value. Okay, we're not going to do that in this, uh, tutorial here, but I just wanted to mention that you can do that in certain versions of Unreal. Let me change this from lit to unlit there. You can kind of see it a bit better. All right, but for now, I think we're done with the hair. So let's go ahead and just uh, go back to our zine skeleton here. And the last thing we want to cover is our cornea material refinement. Okay, so that's for the eyes. Let's go ahead and uh, maybe tilt his head a little bit up just like this. We can see his eyes a little bit better. See those beautiful blue eyes, all right? Just click over here and zoom in a little bit more. Okay, there we go. We got a pretty intense look at his eyes right there. And uh, what we're going to do is refine the eyes. So I'm going to go ahead to the cornea material now. Uh, double click on the cornea material. And we have a couple of different things that we want to do with the cornea material. It's a little bit more complicated. So let's go ahead and import in the uh, cornea materials that we want by going do down to our uh, CC base eye node right here. Okay, and you'll find the cornea materials right here. All right, and the corny materials we want to import in are the AO, of course. We also want to import in the displacement map, okay? So we're going to have some tessellation for this cornea. 
as well as our metallic and our roughness. Okay, we don't need to worry about all the other ones. Okay, let's just go ahead and just import all those bad boys in and maximize our materials once more. And let's zoom out a little bit and kind of uh, spread things out a little bit, make some room for all these new textures that we have. Okay, so this one right here, you can see cornea roughness in the naming. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pipe that into our, uh, let's delete our specular first and pipe the uh, roughness in here. Zoop, oh, there we go. Okay, and this one right here is our ambient occlusion. So we're going to take that to the bottom there and just import that in as our ambient occlusion. And we have a normal, which we're going to adjust in just a moment here. And this one right here is our metallic. So let's bring that up to our uh, metallic node. There we go. And this one here is the cornea displacement. Now in order to use this, we need to go ahead and select our core, our main node for our cornea here. And we need to go all the way down to tessellation. And we have currently have no tessellation, but we need to change that from no tessellation to flat tessellation. Okay, and uh, then what's gonna happen is we're gonna, it's gonna open up, uh, I'm just gonna move all these over here a little bit. It's gonna open up a world displacement node for us. So what I'm gonna do then is we're just gonna pipe in that world displacement node uh, this uh, texture node, rather, into our world displacement node. All right. You can take a look at the uh, eyeball result over here. Okay, pretty uh, creepy looking eyeball. And you'll notice that the displacement's a little bit off on the eyeball. And if we go ahead and apply this the way it is right now and check out our uh, zine, he has some creepy uh, gray eyes right now, so we'll just wait for the shaders to compile. And you'll see that uh, we indeed have a little bit of an issue there, especially on the uh, eyes over here. So our displacement obviously needs to be adjusted. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back to our cornea material right here. And for our displacement, I'm just going to move it a little bit further back here and let's zoom in a little bit. All right. So what we're going to do is we're also going to create another multiple and constant. Multiply rather and constant. All right. And we're going to pipe the uh, map into this multiply right here. And what we also need in order to adjust that world displacement, let's go ahead and right click and break the link over here, is we need a vertex normal world space. Let's go ahead and type in vertex normal world space. We'll find it right there and another multiply value here. Okay, so just uh, multi, there we go. And we're going to pipe this bad boy into node A and this one over here into node B. And then finally, we're going to pipe them both into the world displacement. Uh, so what we can do here is we can use this constant over here to adjust the uh, world space normal value then. Okay, so let's go ahead and just uh, type in a value of 1 here and reapply that and go back over to Zine Skeleton. All right, so once that's finished compiling, you can see that we now have the more accurate result for our character's eyes. All right, so a little bit more complicated than the uh, other materials, but uh, fairly easy to uh, remedy there. Okay, so look deep into my eyes. Okay, so that's about it for refining the materials in Unreal Engine. And I have a project here that I've already set up just to demonstrate the materials. If we go up to a build, let's go ahead and uh, build our lighting uh, with light uh, production lighting quality there really quickly. And if I go ahead and just simulate that, we can get a, get a nice preview of Zane just uh, pumping up his biceps there. All right, so that's really all I wanted to show you in this tutorial, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Hope you learned a lot about how to... Uh, you know, optimize your materials in Unreal Engine uh, for your iClone characters. And make sure you check out our other tutorials on how to import your characters and animations and all that stuff as well. And uh, so make sure you check out our forums as well over at forum.reillusion.com. And I hope to see you in the next video.